Kroger. Where does he keep finding these places? Let me just tell you, they're everywhere. cake out of my flavor catcher. <clears throat> Chapter 13. On that day, Yeshua went out of the house and sat by the sea. Apparently, he got a little worked up, which I will attempt to not do this time around, unless you guys like that kind of thing. <clears throat> Large crowds gathered to him, so that he went into a boat and sat down, and all the crowds stood on the beach. He spoke to them much in parables, saying, See, the sower went out to sow. As he sowed, some indeed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them, and others fell in rocky places. You know, I, I, I think we've been over this. I mean, this is probably the most, uh, the most, talked about and expounded upon a uh, bit of parable that was ever given. Let's just do it then, huh? Let's just do it. I mean, he, he explains it himself, right? Some fell by the wayside, and birds came and devoured them. Others fell in rocky places where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up because they had no depth. When the sun came up, and they were scorched. Because they had no root, they withered. Others fell among thorns, and the thorns came up and choked them. Others fell on good soil and yield, yielded a crop, some hundred, some sixty, some thirty. That there is reference to Genesis. Here it says, uh, you know, the some yielded a crop. Hundred, some sixteen, some thirty. Abraham was a hundred years old when he had Isaac. Isaac was sixty years old when he had Jacob. And Jacob was thirty years old when he began to have his offspring. He who has an ear, let him hear. The hot ones came and said to him, Why do you speak in them? Speak to them in parables, and he answering said to them, Because it has been given to you to know the secrets of the reign of the heaven, but for them it has not been given. For whoever possesses, to him more shall be given, and he shall have overflowingly, but whoever does not possess, even what he possesses shall be taken away from him. Because of this I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. And in them prophecy of Isaiah is completely filled, which says, Hearing you shall hear and know, by no means understand, seeing you shall see and by no means perceive. <clears throat> For the heart of this people has become sickened. Their ears are hard of hearing, their eyes have they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their heart and turn back, and I heal them. Turn back to what? 
Oh, that would probably be the first five books. But, hey, you know what? What do I know? Anyway, that's Isaiah 6, uh, verse 9 and 10. Blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. For truly I say to you that many prophets and righteous ones long to see what you see, and they did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. And then you then hear the parable of the sower. And one hears the word of the rain and does not understand it. Then the wicked one comes and snatches it away by what was sown in his heart. This is what is sown by the wayside. And that's sown in rocky places. This is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Uh, remember this bird part, okay? The birds that come and take away the seed. Uh, immediately he receives it with joy, but has no root in himself, but is short-lived. And when pressure and persecution arises because, because of the word, immediately he stumbles. And that sown among the thorns is those who hear the words and worries of this age and the seed of riches choke the word and it becomes fruitless. And that sown on the good soil is he who hears the word, understands it, and who indeed bears fruit and yields some a hundred, some sixty, some thirty. I only hope that I could yield 30, maybe. Uh, another parable he put before them, saying, The rain of the heavens has become like a man who sowed good seed in his field, and while men slept, his enemy came and, de and sowed uh, tares among the wheat and went away. When the blade sprouted and bore fruit, the darnel also, also appeared, and the servants of the master of the house came and said, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? From where does this uh, does this have, have darnel? It says darnel here. It tears. And he said to them, A man, an enemy did this. And the servants said to him, Do you wish then that we go and be gather them up? He said, No lest you gather up the darnel and also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of the harvest, I shall say to the reapers, first gather the darnel and bind them in bundles and burn them. But gather the wheat into my granary. Okay, all you guys who are pre-tribbers, uh, think about this. Who gets taken first? The tares. The tares get plucked up and burned. And then the wheat comes up. Anyway. Another parable he put before them, saying, The rain of the heavens is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field. Now here, pay attention. Which indeed is the least of all the seeds. And when it has grown, it is greater than the plants and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the heavens come and dwell in its branches. It's actually a reference to Ezekiel 17, 23, 31, 6, uh, Psalms 104, 12, and Daniel 4, 12. Uh, You remember it was the birds that came and plucked up the seed off the off the ground. But here he's talking about the seed growing up and being, you know, even though it's the least of all these seeds, it grows up and becomes a great tree, and the birds come and nest in the tree. If the birds represented the evil one before, or devils before, why wouldn't it represent devils coming into the church now? Anyway. And there another parable. He spoke to them. The rain of the heavens is like leaven, which woman took and hid in three measures of meal until it was all leavened. Yeshua said all of this to crowds in parables and did not speak to them without parables. So what was spoken by the prophet might be filled, saying, I shall open my mouth in parables. I shall pour forth what has been hidden from the foundations of the world. That's uh, Psalm 78. Now, what about leaven? What do we know about leaven? Leaven is sin. Leaven represents sin. So, okay, we're putting we're put, putting leaven <clears throat> in three measures of meal, bread. 
the woman is Babylon. Woman's come into the, I don't know, can we call them the three uh, main faiths of uh, Judeo-Christianity? I mean, does anybody follow any of this stuff anyway? But I mean, okay, you've got Christians who aren't getting it right. You've got Jews who aren't getting it right. And you've got the Messianic or Hebrew Roots Movement. And they brought all of, the, all of their garbage from these other two uh, outfits and, and, and planted it, you know, all their baggage in this so-called new movement, this late end time movement called the Hebrew Roots Movement. You know, and I, I look at it and I, you know, I am probably being hypercritical but I'm more critical of the Hebrew Roots Movement because they should know better. I mean, we've brought all the garbage that we had in the other place and all our self-righteousness and all our con you know, convictions and condemnations of other people and just brought it into the, into the Hebrew Roots Movement with a lot of bitterness and jealousy and strife and resentment. And now there's factions and factions among factions within, and it's just as divided as any of these other things going on. And yet, at the same time, in, in, in a vein of self-righteousness, is busy po poking fingers in the chest of the church going, Oh, you hypocrites! Oh, you hypocrites! Not knowing that they themselves have a big, fat plank in their eye. Because it doesn't matter the... Uh, the uh, acts of righteousness. If it's, 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 if it's done in self-righteousness, it does you no good. It does you no profit. You already have your reward. So yeah, I mean, how much more puffed up are you in the Hebrew Roots Movement than in the, in, in the other faith? They're all of you looking at each other scathingly, thinking that you have it all together. And I'm not talking about everybody. There are humble hearts in every assembly. I know this. I have seen it with my own eyes. But even this latecomer cannot seem to shake the leaven. Then having sent the crowds away, Yeshua went into the house, and his taught ones came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the darnel in the field. And answering, he said to them, He who is sowing the good seed is the son of Adam. And, in, and the field is the world, and the good seed, these are the sons of the rain, but the darnel are the sons of the wicked one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil, and the harvest at the end of the age, and, and the harvest is at the end of the age. And the reapers are the messengers. As the darnel then is gathered and burned in the fire, so it shall be at the end of this age. Listen very closely. As the darnel then is gathered and burned in the fire, so it shall be at the end of this age. Who got plucked up first? The son of Adam shall send out his messengers, and they shall gather out of his reign all the stumbling blocks and all those doing lawlessness. Insert Torahlessness. And that comes from uh, Zephaniah. Uh, <clears throat> find it yourself. Shall throw them into the furnace of fire. All the stumbling blocks and all those doing lawlessness shall be thrown into the furnace of fire, where there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Why do you... Oh, Lord, Lord, did we not... Then the righteous shall shine forth as the sun. That's Daniel 12:3. In the reign of their father who has ears to hear, he who has ears to hear, let him hear. Again, the reign of the heavens is like treasure hidden in a field which a man having found it hid and for joy over the over over it he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field again the reign of the heavens is like a man a merchant seeking fine pearls who when he has found one pearl of great price went and sold all that he had and bought it 
Think about that, churchianity, with your prosperity gospels, with your greasy grace and your sloppy agape. Again, the reign of the heavens is like a dragnet that was thrown into the sea and gathered some of every kind, which, when it was filled, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into containers but threw the rotten away. Thus shall it be at the end of the age. The messenger shall come forth and separate the wicked out of the midst of the righteous and shall throw them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. I hear nothing about a pre-tribulation rapture in any of this. Yeshua asks them, have you understood all of this? He's asking you today, have you understood all of this? They said to him, yes, master. And he said to them, therefore, every scholar taught in the reign of the heavens is like a householder who brings out of his treasure matters renewed and old. Now, this, we're talking about the Torah scholars, okay? Every scholar taught in the reign of the heavens is like a householder who brings out his treasure, matters renewed and old. Renewed and old. Scholars can show you and point out to you out of the Torah every reference of Messiah. That's what this is discussing. It's not talking about the Gospels. It came to be when Yeshua had ended these parables that he left there, and when he had come to his own country, he taught them in their congregation, so that they were astonished and said, where did this one get this wisdom and miracle? Is this not the son of the carpenter? Is not his mother called Miriam? Is this the brother of Jacob and Yosef and Simon and Yehuda? And his sisters, are they not all with us? Where then did this one get all of this? And they stumbled at him. Yeshua said to them, A prophet is not unappreciated except by those in his own country and in his own house. And he did not do many miracles there because of their unbelief. Move on. <laughs>